34 of the PT Central videos. So how do you stay ahead of everyone else so that your business doesn't fail? Because the stats of businesses failing mm. are pretty scary. They are crazy. Like, how much is it, Nicole? How many businesses fail in their first couple of years? Um, I don't know the exact percent, but 10 years, I know that only 4% of businesses, 4 to 5% of businesses actually get past 10 years. And does that mean they're even successful? It doesn't even mean they're actually getting a profit. It just they're means they're there. Money. It's pretty hard out there in the business industry, but we're just going to talk a bit today about how you can make sure that you are in those top percentages um, and what to exactly to do. That's right. Do you know that you don't want to be, you don't want your, to be one of those that fail. Do you know any you know? more about those stats and business and stuff? No, but I do know that um, the statistics that I'm aware of are that like one, like only one in every five businesses survive the first five years yeah. as well. So in the short term to longer term, the success rate is not very high. Um, no. and there's multiple... Most businesses like run at a loss in their first yeah. two to five years. It's true. Definitely mm. that is true. Um, and a lot of the time you need to have like a lot of cash to get started to live off and stuff because you're not being funded. But if you're smart... Like us, we did not run at a loss. Um, um, no, in our and, first years. No, that's right. And two as well. Um, we did not borrow money. Or oh yeah, we did it all by ourselves. We and self-funded no our business. No crowdfunding or anything like that. That's right. So it is possible. Um, and we want to share with you guys how to do that. Mm. So that's what we're here for. Yeah. So talking about innovative and anticipating mm. a competition. Um, they're two really big key things that we just felt called to talk about today in this video. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully one of, like for someone out there it really applies to and really can be mm -hmm. a game changer for you this podcast and I believe that you're watching mm -hmm. this right now for a very important reason. So um, innovating and I guess anticipating competition mm -hmm. ties in together and um, let's go a little bit more into why they would tie in together. Well think about like some bigger companies that you might know of and who knew that Yahoo was before Google? Yeah. Who, no one says Yahoo it anymore. No. It's called Google it. That's right. So Yahoo was actually the big, like they the big player. They were the monopoly like to start mm. with. Um, what happened? Well, Google come and I guess they just started mm. servicing their clients better. They weren't mm. so in love with their product, but they mm. were focusing on the clients. They just did it mm -hmm. much better and much faster. And so, yeah, I did not know that till the other day and I heard like that and I was really surprised. I didn't even know that Yahoo, mm. Yahoo was before Google at all and yeah. um, they did not anticipate Google. One of those big corporations, I'm not sure if it's Google or Facebook, but has a saying like, think big and move fast. Move so, fast and break things. Maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah I think that's like Facebook. That. Yeah. Um, and talking about Facebook too, what was before Facebook? Yeah, there's like MySpace. MySpace, that's and right. And there's heaps of other been other social media. Like you don't hear about Tumblr or, or Flickr much anymore, but you hear about Instagram all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so there's com these companies are always um, out to get you. Mm. Like um, I, um, IBM was before Microsoft, but you don't hear about them mm. anymore. Uh, before Apple too. Yep, yep, yep. And now Apple's definitely the monopoly there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Samsung is trying to chase them, but I still believe Apple products yeah. are better in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got their own opinion, but yeah. yeah. Um, so the key point, like we're trying to say, is that even if you are in a great position with your business, don't think that it's always going to be that way and mm -hmm. that no one's ever going to Even come these and... big corporations yeah. that were turning over billions of dollars have failed. Mm -hmm. um, like Blockbuster and Netflix. Blockbuster actually had the chances to buy, buy Netflix, Netflix, but yep. they didn't take it because they thought, no, 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 we've got it right. But now look what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, so what can we do as businesses then to make sure that we are not only are anticipating someone coming along, but um, also making sure that we're out in front? Like, what's the key? Um, I guess I like to think into the future, really know who my customers are and what my business is really mm. here for, what do my clients need and what mm. do they don't even know that they need. So if mm. my client in three years time, what, what, will, what will they be needing in three years time and can I give it to them today and can I work towards getting it to them today, whether it's five years, ten years. So innovation. Yeah, definitely innovation. Mm. That's what ties in with anticipating your competitor yeah. because your competitor, if they're going to be better than you're already doing that, like they're already innovating more than you, so you've got to open mm. your mind up to those possibilities. And, Jazz, I listen to Jazz's ideas that sometimes she gets of thinking, what will the fitness industry be in 10 years' time? And I'm not going to share them with you because they're so amazing that <laughs> we might do them. Um, but, you know, we could be your competitors one day and you've got to think, yeah. well, how do I beat Jazz and Nicole? How what would can we you do beat better? us? What would, what would I do better? Um, mm. And what, who is my client going to be? Like, you know, in a couple of years, what are they going to want? Mm. What sort of people are they going to be? Um, what are they going to want from their lives? How are their lives going to be? Like, how is technology going to be there? 
like at that point in time and how can I be a part of that and make sure my business is up to scratch with yeah that start researching what people are mm. predicting that the technology is going to advance to because there are some great mm. predictions out there and like statistical predictions not just some psychic thinking this mm. and that and write and blog about it like literal ones that what's progressing mm. now and what's in prototype mm. now yeah like and also too like thinking if, like let's do an example um, your customer um, your main client group is mums with you know young children um mm. what, what's going to happen in the next three to five years like where are they going to be like yeah. like where are their kids going to be what yeah. are they going to be doing are the kids all going to be using ipads you know their future generations coming through of potential clients for you um so you could start marketing potentially to them now yeah, yeah. so um, that when they do grow up they can be your clients because you're from the forefront of their mind so what can you do better and who are you really servicing? Like who are you really doing businesses and what is your, re your business really, really trying to do? Um, you know, you're not just here to give someone a personal training session. If that's all you think your business is, well, it's still one of those businesses that's going to fail mm. in 12 months' time. You've got to mm. think a lot bigger than that. And most people think, I'm going to go into business because I love writing sessions for someone and I love mm. personal training, but that's not going to make a business successful. You're not going to be a big business mm. owner with that vision. You may as well just work for someone else who has vision. That's right. So, um, you either, yeah, either got to um, have the vision and work towards your own, or spend your life working towards someone else's vision. Mm. Um, and your vision is only limited be? to what you think it can be, yeah. um, and what you can see in the future. So, I think that's the biggest key: is be innovative, innovative, <laughs> innovative, <laughs> innovative, and you know, anticipate that there's always going to be competition, especially in this industry, and especially as we move forward, the health and fitness industry is only going to get Have bigger. Have you seen the changes that's been happening lately, like with wearable technology and online? It's insane. I don't think you're going to have the same clients in even 12 months' time. You need to start thinking now what it's going to be like. If you've got some great ideas, swing them to us. You yeah. more than happy to have a crack at them. Yeah. <laughs> They're any good? Yeah. Cool. So um, just for more business tips and inspiration, make sure you head over to www.ptcentral.net.au and see how we are trying to innovate, innovate and <laughs> transform the fitness mm -hmm. industry to help you guys actually like make it in five years' time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm.